So welcome back to the channel, hope everybody's doing well. In today's video, we're taking a little look at the PWM signal capability from our little process calibrators here. Uh, the SG-003 here can only source the PWM function as it can all the frequency functions. So I've set that up to source at the moment in time. And our MR9270S and our SG-004A here, they can both source and measure. So they are both currently set up to measure the signal coming out of the SG-003A along with the signal on the scope. Uh, so just moved over to the screens here, it looks like the SG-004A has got the better picture on here. So to get to the PWM function, uh, we can go function and then output and then you can see uh, same screen as before. Um, what you do find differently with this, if I go into there, here's where we'll select the PWM function as you can see that it's on there as well. Um, you, if I just uh, enter that and put it back to pulse and then just go through onto the frequency range select and move him up to the maximum. So you'll see when I go back now and I'll to this, take it from pulse to PWM, you'll see that the frequency range will change back down uh, to the zero to 10 kilohertz effectively um, because you cannot run this a 200 kilohertz PWM signal, 10 kilohertz is the maximum output. Uh, same with all these units. Um, and you can go along, again we've got the level output and the voltage that's going to come out, peak to peak voltage of 2 volts there, set up for this particular one. Um, so we'll take him back to there, so he's measuring. Uh, the two settings that you have for the PWM signal is the pulse width and percentage on this one here. We can go up and we can change uh, to whatever we like, uh, not to 100%. And then to change the actual output frequency, we hit the out button and then we can change that to whatever frequency we want to, up to the 9999 or effectively 10 kilohertz, as I said. Um, okay, so we'll zoom back out so you can see some of the signal. So the light's not working in my favor on these uh, screens here, unfortunately. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, turn on one set to 40% and 100 hertz here. And we turn it on and then you can see the output signal on the screen there. You can see our measurement function for the SG-004A. We've got 39.9, which is the 40 there. And we've got the frequency measurement of 100 for our MR9270S. Again, we've got 39.9 for the percentage and then 99.999 for the frequency, so a lot more digits on the MR9270S for measuring the frequency than you get with the SG-004A there, uh, probably worth noting. And then if I just uh, go up from, and you can see the pulse width signal getting wider and wider on the screen there uh, until we hit 100% and we've got a straight line. Uh, when we hit 100%, both our instruments go to zero. Zero up there, so uh, they can't measure 100% pulse width modulation. And we go back down, and obviously, if I go output and go to the frequency, I can up the frequency, which again you can see the oscilloscope is responding there. So, there's a bit more to the demo. What I do have set up here down at the bottom is a little fan motor, a little 6 volt DC motor wired to a FET board here, battery powered and I'm going to run the signal into the gates of the FET from the PWM signal on the Finercy unit here. Uh, it gives a bit of a demo of it, and we can plug him in. Unfortunately, when I do this, you will see that I get an awful lot of noise coming up on the scope, probably from the arrangement here of the FET and the motor uh, being that close and the signal wires aren't twisted and all that kind of stuff. I'll go back to the PWM width. Uh, this motor doesn't respond too well to the frequency because of uh, the nature of it. But you can see we can go down here um, on 10% and I can slow them down almost to a stop. Um, see I'm getting spinning slowly there and going up again. So you can see it controls the speed there nicely and the other two instruments to respond as I'm changing the parameters on the SG-003A here. Uh, da, 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 what we need to do, so we do have presets on this as well, so we can go function, preset, and then we can do 
uh, on normal little functionality of the Finercy units and change stuff 100% there and go back down to one it won't be able to turn the motor at all um, and as well as that we also have the programming function that we can also get to um, look at that and go to the programming function um, and we do have so there you can see it's spinning up and uh, slowing back down again So all of the same functionality that you get when you're doing the frequency operations you get onto the PWM and you can program all these three units in exactly the same manner. The only thing I will point out, I'm moving back in, hopefully try and pick up the screen on the SG-003A, the, the 004A is the same as well. You can see the frequency has gone to OL. When you go to program mode you have to set the frequency up prior to going into the program mode. Um, it seems to get in a bit of a, uh, a mess when you do that. See, I can't actually get it back now. Um, it stays on OL all the time. Um, even though I try and switch between the two, it just doesn't like it. Um, so there's a bit of a bug there within the uh, uh, software by the looks of it. And then you can see I've got it back now and I'll be able to set the frequency back up by going way out and set the frequency there and then it should uh, work again no problems there we go uh, so yeah not quite sure why it does that seems to be a bit of a bug as i say both the finercy units do it but there is a little work around there to get it back up and running again it's just something to be aware of uh, the MR927-0S is very similar and you have to set the output frequency first before you play around with the PWM uh, when you're in programming mode. Um, so they're fairly similar in that respect. So with regard to the accuracy measurements I made on this, there are I put the set of tables up now, so they're the actual raw data that I made. You can freeze the screen and take a look at that. Uh, should you want to study them more in depth, uh, we'll move on to some plots as I tend to prefer to display the information in that manner. So this first plot here is a comparison of the percentage PWM output at a fixed frequency of one kilohertz. And you can see there if you compare the two for nurse units to the MR9270S, there looks to be a bit more of a stable output in terms of PWM percent on those two units than there is on that Mr. Signal unit there. You can see the Mr. Signal unit is struggling down at the lower frequencies. PWM signal seems to be a little bit out and it gets better as you go up to the higher percentage of PWM output on the Mr. Signal unit there. Uh, we'll move over to this plot here, this is plot number two here. I've done the opposite and I've kept the PWM output at 60% and then I've gone across the frequency band um, and interestingly we've got the opposite result now the Finercy shows more deviation um, especially at low frequency whereas the Mr. Signal unit there shows 100% accuracy across the whole frequency range there so much more stable output in terms of frequency than there is in PWM% percent on the Mr. Signal uh, and then finally this uh, third plot here and what I did is plot the drift at 60% PWM across the complete frequency range of the units. And then again you see the MR9270S seems to have a higher drift as you get towards the higher frequency levels than you see on the Finercy units. Um, so it's a bit of a 50-50 result really. Some of the parameters are a little bit better on the Finercy units uh, than they are on the MR9270S, but that tends to do a little bit better on the PWM output. Okay, so I've just set up these units so you can see a comparison of the waveforms out here on the oscilloscope. Uh, we've got the SG-003A here, that's running the top trace, and the MR9270S, that's on the bottom trace there. Um, we'll just uh, zoom into the settings on the MR9270S that hopefully you can see just there. Um, they're all going to be set up the same. We've got uh, 100 hertz frequency and 30% PWM. The only thing is whilst I'm on the MR9270S here, um, if we just go... Uh, previously I'd said 
the maximum frequency you can get out is 10 kilohertz on the PWM function. On the Finercis, that is the case, and I showed that. However, messing around afterwards, I found out that the MR9270S does go up to the 100 kilohertz there. So that's an added functionality on the MR9270S that you don't see either of the SG units there. So we'll just get rid of him and go back. And then we'll just pan around onto the oscilloscope that you can see there, hopefully. Uh, that's looking pretty good. So on our waveforms here, you can see that the bottom waveform for the mr 927 rs you've got a bit of a higher curve, I guess, more visible curve on this waveform at the top than you have on the Finercy unit there. Um, but other than that, they're both pretty much the same. If we look at the measurements down at the bottom, frequency-wise, we've got 100 hertz here, so no problems. Uh, rise time. Um, in the previous video on the frequency functionality, we did see that the SG-003A had a higher rise time. Um, and you can see it there, 1.5 against 4.4 for the MR9270S. Uh, duty is exactly the same on both, the more and near as can be. Amplitude, again, going back to the frequency functionality, we had issues with the amplitude, didn't we? Um, and you see that the MR9270S is probably a little bit better in that department than the SG-003A is where you see that the amplitude is uh, slightly high against the nominal 2 volts, 2.3 volts and 2.4 volts peak to peak against the 1.9 and 2.18, 2.2 for the MR9270S there. So if you're plugging this into something like the FET board that I had, it's just something to be wary of that uh, the amplitude on the for nurse units is a little bit higher than the nominal value. Um, so, okay, so what I'm just going to do is take out the SG-003A, and I'm going to put in the SG-004A in there, like that. Uh, you can pan around, and then you can see there you go, so the two units there. Uh, both set up the same, 30% and uh, 100 hertz for the output. Go back and just quickly go through the measurements. You can see the frequency here is comparable on both of them, 100 hertz. Uh, rise time, this time we've got more comparable rise time. The SG-003A is five-ish microseconds against the four and a half for the MR9270S. Uh, duty is comparable, no problems there. Amplitude, um, so the SG-004A is not quite as bad as the SG-003A, it's a bit closer to the nominal, uh, but it still is a little bit of an issue still a bit worse than the MR9270S there really. Um, okay, so what I'm just going to do is spin him around and I'm going to put the UTG962 in placement of the MR9270S there, so I just need to... So this is my setup on my generator, I'm operating at 100 hertz here, we are 2 volts peak to peak and the Pulse width is 3 milliseconds, which is equivalent to the 30% PWM on the calibrators I'm going to compare it to. So I'll just go through the values, the scopes reading. Um, my UTG962 is on the bottom trace here. You can see we're on 100 hertz on frequency, so no problems. Uh, rise time is 4.2 for the SG-004A. You can't measure it on... The, for the UTG962, that's probably a limitation of the scope. Um, it's on 15 nanosecond setting on the actual screen on the UTG962, um, so uh, much faster. Um, duty cycle is 30% for both of them, no problems. Amplitude, so okay, we got very, very close, haven't we? No difference between the amplitude and the peak to peak on the waveform generator, so you've got a better quality output than these uh, calibration units seem to be giving in the frequency function. The only thing to be wary of with regards to that is that to get the two volts out you have to terminate the UTG962 with a 50 ohm terminator and we can just pan up onto the, if we go up onto, uh, so hopefully you can see up here that there is actually a terminator and if I unplug that terminator and remove it you can see the waveform has jumped up. Let's zoom back in and with the terminator removed you can see I've got a peak to peak of 4.66 volts there. So if you're using this unit for PWM, again going onto a FET board and you forgot to terminate, you could be putting quite a high voltage onto a gate which may damage the component. 
So in that respect, these calibration units have a little bit better functionality over a waveform generator. Let's just put the load back on, so the 50 ohm loads back on. Um, and the only thing is just to say, obviously with the square waveform here, much, much better quality waveform coming out of the UTG962 than these little calibrators. Um, so that'll be it for this video. I'll leave links to the previous video on the frequency functionality in the description box below. Um, I'm going to miss out doing the speed functionality on these because I think I kind of covered that off when I tested the motor on the inverter. Um, I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below. So the next video will be on the Q pulse functionality that these units can offer. Um, so that'll be it for this one. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. And I'll see you again in the next one.